Good day. A year ago, I reviewed three AVP games. AVP the arcade game, AVP on the SNES, and finally, AVP 2 on the PC. And now I'm going to review two more. Today I'm going to review what is chronologically the first AVP game ever released, AVP The Last of His Clan, and for the next video I will finally review AVP 1 on the PC. Now, what is surprising about AVP The Last of Its Clan is that this game came out on the Game Boy. Usually you see games of this type first show up on a major console and not a handheld. But that is the case here, and surprisingly enough, this game is actually good. So now, let's take a look at it. The game is a side-scroller, and it has a very Metroid feel to it, as you have to navigate very labyrinthine levels. The primary objective of each level is to acquire a key, and that's it. AVP, the last of the locksmiths. Now, acquiring that key is easier said than done, as you have numerous enemies that you have to face, like face huggers, chest bursters, and drones. In order to fight them, you have access to a wide variety of weapons, and you actually get a fairly well-designed inventory screen. You bring it up with the select button, and you get a fairly well-rendered picture of the Predator, and when you scroll to different weapons, an arrow points to different parts of his armor. Your standard wrist blade is almost worthless. You can't hit face Huggers with it most of the time. It's really a matter of luck. And you can't kill drones with it without taking a hit. You can kill chestbursters fairly easily with it, but most of the time you will want to equip something better if you have it. You then have the Smart Disc. This is the weapon you will probably use most of the game since it doesn't take any energy and can actually kill two enemies at the same time. Even in this game, it's really overpowered. There are even physics! If it hits a wall, it will stop, and you can pick it up again. The Plasma Caster is rather odd. It doesn't use energy either. Rather, it uses this odd power-up. And the effect of the weapon firing is also strange as well. You don't see a burst of energy, but instead, the targeting lasers themselves. Well, this is actually somewhat accurate. When you finally do see the laser targeters, you're already dead. As you progress throughout the levels, you eventually have to destroy walls. And you do this by placing bombs. The concept of the Predator Bomb would later be seen in AVP 2. The facehuggers are actually really quite difficult to kill because you can't harm the eggs and you can't really hit them in mid-air unless you're really quite lucky or if you have the Plasma Caster. So what you have to do is equip the cloaking device and then they jump at you and then die. This weapon is balanced out by the fact that it uses a TREMENDOUS amount of energy and your energy is also constantly depleting itself for some reason. You know, that Predator should have left his iPod back at the ship. Sure, the Predator theme is good, but it's not good enough to risk your life over. Graphically, this game looks pretty good for a Game Boy game. The Predator looks like a Predator, but he doesn't appear to have any armor on. So it's like you're controlling a nude Predator? Hey, who knows? Customs can vary from clan to clan. He might be from the Flaming Fist Clan! The enemies all look like they should, except for the chestburster, which looks more like a snake than anything else. Now, the levels pretty much all look alike, and it would be easy to get lost. But thankfully, the developers added a map, and as you explore, the map gets filled in more and more. And this is really helpful since the game is hard enough as it is. This game is really representative of classical difficulty. You have a very small number of hit points, and there are no health power-ups at all. Which means you have to play each level almost perfectly in order to progress. And to make matters worse, in between levels, you lose all of your weapons. What does he do with them all? This literally makes no sense to lose your weapons between levels. What, does the Predators get an inflated sense of self-esteem and he just throws them away because he doesn't think he needs them anymore? Sound design is basic, but this is the Game Boy, so you can only really expect beeps and bloops. The music is surprisingly really good. And the music for the main title is actually a good 8-bit rendition of the original Predator theme.
Eventually, you do get to fight the Alien Queen. And the boss fight is stupid as all hell. Really? It sucks. The queen doesn't move around. All she does is sort of paw at the air a little bit. And that's it. You can just sort of jump up on her head and just punch her to death. But then again, if you think about it, this game is really tough throughout. And you might want an easy boss fight, because there is nothing worse than losing hours of playtime right at the end. Another interesting thing about this game is that it has a story that can actually fit into canon. The story takes place chronologically after all the events in AVP, since most events in AVP took place in the 22nd century. However, AVP Thrill of the Hunt took place in the 24th century, so this story isn't that far-fetched. It's mentioned in the cutscene that the reason why all of this took place was because a Predator egg ship, a type of ship which was seen in the first AVP comic, decided to deposit some eggs on Alpha Centauri, and then the Predators went to go hunt there and were completely overwhelmed. You know, maybe they're not from the Flaming Fist clan, maybe they're from Ned the Preds clan, because really, they should know how many humans are on Alpha Centauri, seeing as how it's probably one of the most populated worlds in human space, seeing as how... In the Aliens universe, Alpha Centauri was the first world colonized, so probably by the 26th century, it's gonna have a population of billions! And so basically, this plot is somewhat similar to Predator Concrete Jungle. You are a single Predator out to avenge his clan and regain his honor. Now just where this particular Predator was while his hunting friends were getting slaughtered, it's never elaborated on. Maybe he was with Ned the Pred! Screwing something up, no doubt. The ending is pretty bad, it's just... Mission completed, and that's it. That's it. That's all the fruits of your labors. Two words. And thus, we now get into my recommendation. The game has not aged well at all. In 1993, this game would have been good. And had I known it existed at the time, I would have probably really liked it. But now, it is really quite boring. All you ever really do is collect keys, and the game is really difficult. You have little health, no health power-ups, and you can never regain health except between levels. Each enemy does about one damage, but sometimes they will spawn right on top of you. Or, there's an infinite spawn, and those infinite spawns are really quite annoying because they just keep coming and you can't move. The face huggers are the worst, as they attach to you and do constant damage, and getting them off is really quite difficult. I think it actually comes down to luck, because you can punch the air five times and they won't fall off, or you can punch the air one time and they will. Like with AVP on the SNES, I only really recommend this game if you just want to collect the actual cartridge. Mainly because the game just is not that playable. It has a bit more depth than the AVP game on the SNES, because in that game all you did was just walk to the right and punch things, whereas in this one you actually have some puzzle solving elements. But still, this game is very tedious. You might have fun for like the first five minutes, but after you've had to replay a level five times, it gets old really fast. For next time, I will be reviewing AVP1 on the PC. But for now, this is Jiralots wishing you good God of War 3. Good, infamous, or whatever makes you happy.